authorship when it comes to research is often a sticky issue, specifically deciding who's in and out and for what reasons. Authorship is important because it gives credit to those involved in creating the new knowledge, but it also implies responsibility and accountability. However, the list of authors alone does not tell us who contributed and in what way. I'll discuss the contributions of different authors in a different video. Now open in front of me is the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors website and they have a lovely page on defining the role of authors and contributors. Let's look at how they describe an author. An author needs to make substantial contributions to the conception or design of the work or the acquisition, analysis or interpretation of the data for the work and drafting the work or revising it critically for important intellectual content and final approval of the version to be published and agreement to be accountable for all aspects of the work in ensuring that questions related to the accuracy and integrity of any part of the work are appropriately investigated and resolved. Now, there's an article by McNutt et al published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences for the, of the United States of America, and I'll put links in the description box below this video to these resources. Now, this article expands on the definition that I just read. It just gives us slightly more information. And it's a very good article to read. It really um, talks about transparency in authorship, so I would really recommend that you go through it. Each author is expected to have made substantial contributions to the conception or design of the work or the acquisition analysis or interpretation of the data or the creation of new software used in the work or have drafted the work or substantively revised it and to have approved the submitted version and any substantially modified version that involves the author's contributions to the study and to have agreed to be personally accountable for the author's contributions and to ensure that questions related to the accuracy and integrity of any part of the work, even ones in which the author was not personally involved or appropriately investigated, resolved and the resolution documented in the literature. Another valuable resource is the website of the Council of Science Editors. Now on their webpage, authorship and authorship responsibilities, and again, I'll put the link in the description box below this video, they expand on the definitions of authorship but also look at some other authorship issues. And I'm going to go through them. Firstly, we get to guest authorship. Now, guest authorship has been defined as authorship based solely on an expectation that inclusion of a particular name will improve the chances that the study will be published or increase the perceived status of the publication. So that guest author does not meet the criteria for being an author, yet they are being included. Then honorary and gift authorship, um, that is when has been defined as authorship based solely on the tenure's affiliation with the study. For example, when a head of department gets authorship just because they're the head of department but have not, um, are not meeting the criteria for authorship. Ghost authorship, ghost authors participate in the research, data analysis and or writing of the manuscript but are not named or disclosed in the author byline or acknowledgements. Examples of ghost authors include undisclosed contributors who are employees of pharmaceutical or device companies, medical writers, marketing or public relations writers, and junior staff writing for elected or appointed officials. So any person who makes a substantial contribution to a manuscript should be listed in the author byline, if appropriate, or in the acknowledgements along with the individual institutions, institutional affiliations if relevant. Then we also get to another issue, authorship for sale. Now, can you believe this? So in some instances um, have been reported in which non-authors have attempted to buy authorships from a, an author of a paper, often after the paper has been invited for revision or provisionally accepted. And then um, editors should just be aware of this. And that's why when you want to add or, uh, an, edit, uh, an author at the last minute, um, you often have to jump through quite a few hoops when it comes to the publication process, and that's completely understandable. Then we get to anonymous authorship. Because authorship should be transparent and requires public accountability, it is not appropriate to use pseudonyms or to publish scientific reports anonymously. 
in extremely rare cases when the author can make a credible claim that attracting his or her name to the document could cause serious hardship, like a threat to personal safety or loss of employment, a journal editor may decide to publish the content anonymously. And then we have group authorship and they describe uh, when, uh, what happens when you publish in a group um, and it may be appropriate when a group of researchers has collaborated on a project um, such as a multi-center trial, a consensus document or an expert panel because it can be inaccurate and impossible to list all collaborators, some would not meet the journal's authorship criteria and a byline space may preclude such a listing. Authors need to think about how to communicate credit and responsibility for content. And then they give two group authorship models here. Then deceased or incapacitated authors for cases in which a co-author dies or is incapacitated during the writing submission or peer review process, co-authors should obtain disclosure and copyright documentation from a familiar or legal proxy. Now it is the responsibility of the authors to decide who will meet the criteria of, for authorship, who will contribute in what way to the specific knowledge that is being created, and it's not the journal editorial team's responsibility to resolve issues. I would definitely recommend that you keep these three links and resources close by and leave your comments in the comment box below this video. How do you resolve authorship issues and how do you approach authorship allocations in your own field and in your own setting? If you found this video helpful, smash the like button. For more useful tips to boost your research experience, subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And while you're at it, hit the bell so that you get notified whenever I produce a new video. If you need a solution to a challenge not yet covered on my channel, leave a comment in the box below. See you in the next video.